All right, we are gonna talk about knife safety today. So knife safety really includes anything that's sharp and could harm you. So this is knives, graters, peelers, anything with blades on it. And yes, a peeler even has a blade. So um, right now I am actually in the process of making soup. So I have a bunch of ingredients out. I've got potatoes, carrots, I've got an onion. I just washed some celery. Um, I have some butternut squash off to the side, bunch of stuff to make soup today. First, I'm gonna start by peeling my potatoes. So your peeler has typically two sides. It has this side right here that's like a blade, um, and then it has the back side. This is like, has teeth on it. Um, when you peel, you want to push away from you, okay? So I'm holding my potato and I'm pushing away from myself to get the skins off. Okay, um, potatoes do grow under the ground, so they are covered in dirt when they come out. And so it's really important to make sure you rinse your potatoes um, because as you peel them, oftentimes, the residual dirt that didn't come off, because they just kind of get rinsed um, when they go through packaging, that residual dirt will end up on the flesh of the potato and you do not want a dirty tasting potato, okay? So I'm just peeling. Um, anytime you have dark spots on a potato, that's usually injury from harvesting, okay? Because they're harvested by big machines. And so I just take my peeler and I get the excess um, brown spots off. Okay, and I'm just gonna set my potatoes off to the side because I will be cutting them now that I peel them. Um, I am peeling them into a bowl as best I can to catch all of the skins as they come off just to keep my work surface clean. It'll make cleaning up a lot easier. Um, this process here where I have all of my ingredients out and ready to go, this is called mise en place, okay? And having all of my ingredients out and ready to go, okay? I'm not gonna do all the potatoes in this video just to give you a general idea. Obviously a potato is round and a peeler is flat, so it's really hard to get every single piece off um, potato peels are not bad. They don't taste bad. Um, the biggest issue is just make sure that you clean it really well. Um, potato peels actually have a lot of nutrition in them, and if you can um, eat them, I highly recommend it. They have tons of nutrition um, and good flavor, again, as long as you get the dirt. Um, I'm just going to peel the two right now for my demo. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull one of my cutting boards over. I've got two here right now. Okay. Um, this is a chef's knife. This is the knife that I'm going to be using today. Yes, it is a big knife. It is also a very sharp knife. The size of your knife determines the size of what you're cutting. I'm cutting a fairly large object, therefore I need a fairly large knife. If my knife was only this long, it would make it really hard to cut this. This is hard, this is large, it's round. Okay, I need something that's going to allow me to do the job quickly and efficiently. So. The first thing I'm going to do with this potato is actually give myself a flat surface to work from. So I'm gonna roll my potato up on my side. I'm gonna hold it here with a claw, okay? And then I'm gonna put my knife in and just cut down, okay? Now, I have a flat surface and my potato is not gonna move, okay? From here, I am just going to again use my claw and my knife is kind of rocking. I'm gonna be boiling these potatoes for a soup so they don't need to be um, in really small pieces, okay? And I'm just rocking my knife, okay, until I get nice big chunks, okay? And I'll put them over here in this measuring cup. Um, potatoes do turn brown, okay, if they are left out. So if you're gonna cut them and then not use them in the next five to 10 minutes, um, you can always put them in salt water and that will help keep them from turning brown. Okay, so same thing here. All right, nice flat side of my potato. Okay, this one is a little smaller, so I'm just gonna cut it into thirds. Okay, you notice I'm turning my food, not my hand. Okay, I really only have certain places I can stand in the kitchen. So I turn my food, okay, so that I am not at the mercy of my food. Okay, all right, so there's my potatoes. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my celery. Again, I am doing a soup, so these don't have to be in super tiny pieces, but I am going to saute these first. So first thing I wanna do, like I said, I washed it, 
celery goes in really sandy soil so the sand actually comes up from the ground up in between the stalks of the celery okay so i took all the pieces apart these are called ribs or stalks of celery okay and i washed them really good i'm going to cut off the drier ends okay at the top and at the bottom all right again i have a little bowl over here for my trash okay so it doesn't collect on my counter celery okay is like a semicircle so i'm gonna take it and put it with like the rainbow the arch going up okay again i'm gonna hold it with my claw and i'm gonna use my knife and i'm just gonna slice down my celery okay and i use my hand to push my food forward okay i'm not moving my knife i'm moving the food okay it's like a little assembly line All right when i get to these bigger pieces okay i'm actually going to cut it in half just because I want it to cook evenly. I want them to all be the same size. Okay. All right, so I'll cut those in half and then chop through my last couple pieces of celery there. Okay. So again, I'm going to scoop out my celery, set it off to the side here in my bowl because I'm going to be sauteing this here in a minute. Okay. time's sake I'm gonna cut all of these together now that you've seen me do it okay is a fantastic flavor um, it doesn't get enough credit it really is in so much um, and it's the base of so many of those fall flavors that we think about um, so don't neglect your celery celery is delicious okay let's talk about onions onions are like the king of vegetables in my opinion um, onions are covered in this papery outer layer again onions grow underground well semi underground they're usually buried in the dirt up to about here okay so onions are semi underground all right we want to get some of this outer shell off of it i am going to be dicing this onion because i want to get as much flavor out of it as possible so the way i do that okay my onion has a root and it has a stem if you think about the root like a ponytail holder okay it holds all the layers of the onion together. If I cut this off, my onion layers are gonna fall apart. So I wanna leave this on until the very last minute. Okay, so what I do is I'm gonna make a tunnel with my hand. I'm gonna put my knife in my tunnel and I wanna cut right between the root and the stem. Okay, so make sure I can see what I'm doing and I just cut right down between them. Okay, so now you can see my root Okay, it's still holding my two onion halves together. But now I'm cutting a flat object instead of a round object. Okay, so I'm gonna take my onion, I'm gonna go ahead and chop off just the stem end. Okay, cut that over here. And now I can peel off this outer paper layer. Okay, usually you need to peel off one or two. You just want it to be um, the nice fleshy part. And usually the outer layers are very, very thin. If you start getting thick layers, you've peeled too far. Okay, so just one or two of those thin layers need to come off. Okay, and this way they cook nicely. Those outer layers are really tough and they don't cook down nicely. And so you're gonna have this like chewy kind of papery onion in your mouth and that doesn't feel so good in your mouth. Okay, so now I have my onion half, my step, my root is still on, I cut the stem end off. Okay. I'm going to start by mincing and here's how I'm dicing my onion and here's how I do that. So I'm going to put my hand nice and flat on the top. I'm going to take my blade and I'm cutting right here in the onion. Okay. And I want to cut back towards the root. Okay. And I just kind of wiggle my knife, making sure my hand is completely out of the way. I'm not going all the way through. So you can see, okay, how far through the onion I went. Okay pull my knife out and now I'm going to make vertical slits in the onion okay just using the point of my knife and I just cut back towards the root but again I'm not cutting off the root okay just some vertical slits and a couple little pieces of onion have already fallen out okay so I'm just going to give them a quick little dice make them nice and small and add them to my bowl of onions 
Now, my onion, okay, is in all of these pieces, but they're all being held together by the root, okay? So now I'm gonna again make my claw. This claw protects me, okay? Because the flat part of my knife would hit my knuckles before it hits my fingertips, okay? And I'm just going to rock my knife down my onion. The reason this knife cuts so nicely, guys, is because it is so sharp. There is almost no effort. I hardly have to push at all, okay? I mean, literally, it just glides through my food, okay? No different than cutting butter, okay? So keep that in mind. If your knives are not really, really easy to use, they need sharpened. Okay, you can buy a sharpening steel. A lot of times they come with your knife sets. There are lots of great videos on how to sharpen a knife. Okay, do the same thing again. Okay, cut back towards the root. Okay, without going through it or without cutting that top layer off. Okay, and then again, make vertical slices through back towards the root. Okay, and then just slice down the onion. Okay. And then this is all that gets thrown away. Very little bit, nothing is wasted, okay? Let's scrape up the last of my onion here. Chop, 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 all right. And my carrots. Now normally I would be using a nice big carrot, um, but the grocery store was out. So again, I'm gonna cut so my carrots have a flat spot, okay? Cutting a round object is really hard, so we wanna cut it so it has a flat surface to sit on, okay? And once my carrot has a flat surface, it's really easy to just run down the side, okay? And dice it up, all right? So. I am not gonna dice all of these for this video, um, but I just wanted to show you guys roughly how to do it. And then the video will pick back up with me sauteing these for your rest of your demo. All right, guys. So there you have it, basic knife safety. Let's talk about washing sharp objects, okay? So we're gonna change the angle here. We're gonna switch over to the sink. All right, so now you see my sinks. Um, especially here at school, when we wash, we have a very strategic system. So I'm gonna start by putting my drain plug in, okay? There's a little circle in the bottom of the drain. I wanna slide that right in and push it all the way down, okay? Then we're gonna turn on our hot water okay now some of our faucets are a little wonky here at school this one actually kind of sprays um, so i have to put a towel over it to catch the spray otherwise it soaks the back of the sink okay but i have on the hot water okay i also then i'm going to add my soap you only need one little squirt it's about a tablespoon that's all you need it's plenty and plenty of water okay i'm going to take my drying area over here i'm going to take one towel i'm going to fold it out this is gonna be where I'm gonna set my clean, rinsed tools, okay? All right, I just take my hand, rub it in here because I've got all the soapy bubbles, okay? All right, my water is nice and warm, okay? Now let's talk about cleaning sharp objects. So I'm gonna move my clear water over here to let it rinse. Okay, when I have a sharp object, I do not just drop it in the sink, okay? Because if I go to put my hand in and I'm not sure where the blade is, I could hurt myself. So I always hold sharp objects. I save them off on the side of my counter. I set it in the water. I take my dishcloth, okay, holding it, and I clean it out of the water so I can see what I'm doing. I always make sure that there is something between me and the blade, okay? Then I rinse it under warm, clear water. That warm water actually helps things evaporate quicker, okay, and then they're safer. 
Same with my knives. Now, I am not ever going to let go of this handle. I'm gonna put my knife in and put the blade away from me. I'm gonna kind of just submerge it a couple times. Now I'm gonna take my rag. This is the dull side of the knife. The blade is over here. I put my rag and I run my rag down the dull side, okay? So the blade is away from me and only the rag is touching the blade. Only the rag is touching any part of what could hurt me, okay? Nice clear water, okay? Again, I'm gonna hold on to the handle. I can rinse it under the water without ever letting go of the handle, okay? And now my knife can sit on the towel. Knives, sharp knives especially, cannot go in the dishwasher. It is very, very detrimental to the blades. Knives are an investment, they're a tool, and you wanna treat those tools with respect. And you do that by washing them by hand and making sure that they stay clean and dry so that they do not rust. When you're all done with your dishes and you're ready to dry them off, again, you're gonna to wanna to take a clean towel. With my knife, I'm gonna hold the handle, okay? And I'm gonna run this clean towel down the blade making sure that I get all the water off the blade, okay? And then I switch, you notice I'm still not handling the blade, okay, all the way down. And when I'm done, I have a nice, dry, clean knife, okay, and my blade stays intact. All right, it is time for my favorite soup of fall, my butternut squash soup. This is a recipe of my own creating. It's flavors that I love. We're gonna go with it. So first things we need to do, okay, I have all of my ingredients, okay, mise en place out. I have my diced onions, I have my chopped celery, carrots, potatoes, okay, garlic, olive oil, salt and pepper, and my chicken stock. Everything, is within arm's reach. This is key. I need to be able to grab things quickly so that this recipe cooks appropriately. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do here is go ahead and turn on my stove, okay? And make sure that I have both elements on and I'm gonna get that pot going. I'm gonna be using a wooden spoon for most of this so I can get a little more of my face in here. Okay, how's that? More my face. I'm using a wooden spoon for most of this. Um, we're getting this warmed up, okay? I do need a spoon so I can get my garlic out, okay? As my pan is warming, I'm gonna add my olive oil. Um, I need about two tablespoons of olive oil, okay? So that's usually about two good seconds of pouring. Okay, um, another thing I use for this recipe, this is a smooth soup, it's a blended soup. Um, so that means after all the vegetables are cooked, I pulverize them, okay? And you can't tell what's what. This is really great when you have people who say they don't like something. Um, and in fact, you know they do all the time. I don't like onions, I don't like garlic, and yet I watch you eat pizza. Yes, you do like onions and garlic, you just don't like knowing that you're eating onions and garlic. So, meet my friend, the Immersion Blender, okay? This is essentially a blender on a stick, okay? I can put it in liquids instead of pouring the liquids into another vessel. And I turn it on and this blends whatever bowl it's in or pot or whatever, okay? So, my oil is warming up. I can feel the heat coming off my pan. You notice I'm not sticking my hands in the oil, but I can feel the heat. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is sweat down or soften my aromatics, my mirepoix, okay? Onions, celery, and carrots are called mirepoix. It's a French term, um, and it's like the great three, okay? Um, and these three are the basis for most French cooking. They're the basis for most soups as well, um, globally. You see some variation of these three vegetables, okay? Um, so I'm gonna start with my onions, okay? I put those in and they're already sizzling, okay? So my onions are in, I'm gonna take my empty bowl and I'm gonna put it in my soapy sink, okay? 
never just leave stuff out. When you're done with it, get rid of it. Okay, so my onions are in. All right, I'm gonna hold on to there. I'm just gonna stir them around a little bit, get them all coated in some olive oil. Okay, and we're gonna let them start to soften. Okay, we are sauteing these onions, okay? What that means is I'm cooking it um, in a pan with just a little bit of fat. The olive oil is the fat, okay? There are lots of things we saute. Technically, scrambled eggs are sauteed, okay? Um, but anytime you're softening vegetables for like a soup or a sauce base, um, you're sauteing it, okay? The difference between sauteing and pan frying, pan frying, you're not moving it around constantly. So like, let's say I was doing bacon, I'd be pan frying it because I'm not pushing the bacon around. Now, if I had diced up the bacon and it was in little tiny pieces, like I was gonna put it on a salad or something, then I would be sauteing it because I'd be stirring it around constantly. But like bacon, I put the whole piece in and I just let it sit and cook. Same with like a steak or maybe a sunny side up egg, that's pan frying, that's the only difference. So, sauteing, you're stirring constantly. Pan frying, you put it in and leave it. And maybe you turn it once or twice, but you're not constantly moving it in the pan. Now you can see all the steam coming off my onions. Smells incredible. I love the smell of cooking onions. Um, onions do not make my eyes water, probably because I've been doing this for so long. Um, but also certain types of onions are more acidic. Um, white onions are the most acidic onion. Um, they have a lot of bite to them, okay? They're very like sulfurous. Um, they are definitely gonna make you cry. Purple onions, yellow onions, not so much. But white onions, absolutely, they will make you cry, okay? So these are all of that moisture, all that steam, that's the water in the onions evaporating, okay? Getting all the water out of the onions, okay? The heat, transforms the onions from this really sulfurous, bitey vegetable to something that's actually really sweet. Cooked onions are actually very sweet, okay? So, sauteing down my onions, all right? Now I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of garlic. I'm just using pre-minced garlic uh, because that's what I have here at school. Um, if you're using cloves of garlic, you're gonna use about four cloves of garlic for this. Um, if you're using minced garlic like this, okay, um, it's about two tablespoons. All right, add my garlic in, garlic and onions. Those are the kings of flavor, okay? And they're the acid component in this dish. This is not, something we think of as acid, but acid gives brightness to a dish. Um, and those onions and garlic are really gonna brighten up all of these root vegetables, okay? Um, that's what's in season right now. Things that grew under the ground. They've been growing all summer, and now they're getting harvested. Root vegetables, squash, okay? These ground growing plants, these are what are in season and they are delicious, okay? You guys, it's amazing. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead. I don't wanna leave the garlic in there very long by itself because garlic burns easily. So it needs other things to distribute the heat. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my celery. Okay, put that over here. And my carrots. Okay. So all of these, I am now going to sweat down. I'm gonna saute them until they are soft. I want my onions to be translucent, which most of they're getting there now. So translucent means it's kind of clear. Okay, like I can see things through it, but I couldn't maybe like read the newspaper. It's not that clear. Okay, so we're gonna let these soften up in here and sweat down. Okay. Now, one of the questions I get a lot when I make this is why do you cut up the vegetables if you're just gonna puree them? Well, I don't wanna sit here and cook this all day. And a lot of these vegetables, if you think about like celery, right? It has those long strings that run through it. Um, if I were to put huge chunks of celery in this soup, those strings, even with my immersion blender, they would not all disappear, okay? And a lot of people, their criticism of celery is that it's stringy. 
So by cutting it and cutting those strings really short, by cutting across the celery, I didn't cut down the celery, I cut across the celery, okay? Um, I shortened those strings so that they are more likely to puree with my blender and cut up really smooth and fine and not be chunky, okay? So as I'm cooking this, I'm not just watching and smelling, but I'm also listening, okay? So this soup actually, as it's cooking, I can hear the sound, the volume goes down, okay? That tells me that the water is evaporating, okay? It's the loudest when there's the most water, okay? So if the sound starts to decrease, I need to come over and stir it again and see if the sound continues to stay down or if that sound goes back up because I put a new section of the food on the bottom of the pan, okay? So I let it sit for a minute. This is a good time to do your first round of seasoning. You need to layer flavor in your food. If you wait until the very end, all you get is this really surface taste, okay? If you want multi-dimensional flavor, you want to taste every layer of your food, you need to season it at every stage of the cooking process. So right now, these aromatics, the things that have the most fragrance, the smell the most, I'm going to season them. So I'm gonna take a nice pinch, this is kosher salt, okay? And I'm gonna spread it around over my vegetables, okay? Same with the pepper. If you're using fresh cracked pepper, which I always recommend, I just don't have any here at school today. If you're using fresh cracked pepper, four or five cranks, okay? If you're using shaker pepper, okay? Just put a nice thin dusting, I'd say maybe five shakes, okay? Of uh, that fresh cracked pepper, or the ground pepper in there. Just enough that we can start to incorporate those flavors into this. Salt also helps break food down, okay? So. All right, it's starting to get quiet, so I'm gonna give this a stir, and now it's getting loud again, okay? Now I'm also starting to really smell that celery, okay? So not just the carrots, I'm smelling the celery as well. All right, and they really are strong, I love it. Okay. Now, here's the reality. Celery is a very hard vegetable, okay? So are carrots, but carrots tend to cook more quickly than celery. The celery's not gonna get really, really soft before I add the other ingredients. The carrots and the onions definitely will, okay? So those are in there, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and add my potatoes. I only peeled about half the potatoes. Um, that's okay. I don't mind. These are red potatoes and their skins are very, very thin. So I don't mind not peeling them, okay? Their skins cook down really quickly, okay? The last thing I'm going to add to this is my butternut squash. Now I made this yesterday at home, okay? Just because it has to roast. Now, earlier I talked about salt, fat, acid, and heat. This is getting cooked twice. I roasted it. So what that means is I put it in an oven, okay? It was dry. Um, I put oil, vegetable, or olive oil on it, okay? And just kosher salt, and I roasted it. Squash is one of those foods that does not typically taste good raw. It's very earthy. That's a nice way of saying it tastes like dirt, okay? But when you roast it, it gets so sweet. This is why we make pies out of squash. I mean, pumpkin pie, a raw piece of pumpkin, have you ever had it? Not good. Okay, so the squash, when it's roasted, when it's been cooked down and it becomes soft, all of these natural sugars are released. That heat transforms it and releases those sugars. Same with carrots. I'm not a big fan of carrots raw, but I love them cooked because of all the natural sugars that get released from the carrots. They just taste so good to me. Um, so, same with the squash. Um, butternut squash is kind of, it has a very fibrous skin. It's very stringy. So when you do do this and you roast it, you wanna make sure that you get all of those strings off the squash when you peel the skin off. So I roasted it for about an hour. I took it out and let it just sit at room temperature for like a half an hour, 45 minutes before I peeled the skins off. That's why I did this like the night before. I did this after dinner last night. Like the oven was still hot from dinner. I put the squash in while we ate, got the kids ready for bed took it out, let it cool, peeled them, and then put them in the fridge last night, okay? All right, oh, 
guys, it's starting to smell so good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and season again because now I have my potatoes and potatoes do not taste like anything, okay? So again, I wanna make sure that I impart some flavor in those potatoes, okay? Every layer of flavor needs seasoning, okay? Now, here comes the magic, okay? I'm gonna put my squash in. That is two whole squashes. Normally I just do one, okay? Um, but I'm actually making a bigger version of this recipe than I have on the website for you. Um, so. <laughs> so that is two whole squashes. You see my pot is very, very full. Now here's the deal. This is going to cook down, okay? So now that everything is in there, okay, it is time for my liquids. We're going to start, we're going to transform this now from a saute to a simmer, okay? So a simmer is like one step below boiling. I'm using... All right, guys, I did delete some stuff off my phone because uh, we ran out of memory. All right, so these have now been simmering for about 20 minutes. Um, everything is nice and soft. I know that because I can take my wooden spoon and I can actually just like take one of the potatoes and smush it with the spoon against the side of the pot. Okay, so that way I know things are nice and done and tender. Okay, potatoes are nice and hard. We put those in raw, therefore they should be nice and smooth. Okay, I did have to split it into two pots um, simply because these are not as big as my pots at home when I make this. Okay, and like I said, I was making a bigger batch today than I normally do. So now what we're going to do, okay, um, I tasted them a couple times um, while they were cooking. This one, the one that I split off, um, I added a little more stock to. It was a little more vegetal than I wanted. That means like I could still taste kind of like the earthiness of the vegetables um, and I wanted it to be more of like a combined flavor. So how did I do that? Well, I added a little more salt and a little more pepper. Um, those two things just allow those flavors to blend together a little better. Um, so also it hasn't reached its final flavor profile because it's still in chunks. Um, once the potatoes and the carrots and the celery and all those things are pureed together, the flavor is going to change again. So I've got clean spoons. I'm gonna puree these up and I'm gonna taste them again before I season them for the final time. So with my immersion blender, my burners are on nice and low, okay? I can blend this right on the stove. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it on, nice and low. I put the blender in before I turn it on. Okay. And I just move it slowly around the pot. that one a few minutes off the heat allow it to simmer down slow down okay it's not done by any means okay all right now we're gonna do this one I just take the blender and I put it over the vegetables to smooth them out. It's going to make this really, really thick. Like I said, these are a little off because I just split them up. But the process is starting. All right, this one's cooled down a little bit. I'll try it again over here.
you can blend this as much as you want to get the desired smoothness that you're looking for. So this one still has a couple chunks in it, but definitely very, very close. I'm gonna move that one off the heat as well. Just a couple chunks left. So now you can see it is really thick and creamy, okay? And there's no dairy in it. Like it's creamy without adding cream, okay? So I'm gonna give it a little taste. It's really thick. Could definitely use a little more salt. If you like it a little thinner, add a little more broth to it. Um, you can even add water, but again, like I said, when you add water, it doesn't have any flavor, so you have to season that water. So. There you have it, folks. It's thick, it's hearty. This would be great in a bread bowl. It would be great, um, you know, just in a bowl with like some really toasty, crusty baguette, you know, that really crunchy French bread, um, anything like that. This is so warm. It just sticks to your ribs and warms you up on the inside. Super satisfying, tons of vegetables, and you never know what's in it because I just emulsified it into oblivion. All right, hope you guys enjoy making it.